Hello and welcome back to the channel. So in this lecture, we'll just query different databases using drill. So in the previous lecture, we have set up the drill and installed it and also enabled our MongoDB and Hive databases. So let's work with the data and just query it through drill. So in this lecture, let's first create one table in Hive as well as in MongoDB. So if you guys are not following along, I'll just repeat the process for you and then we can connect those databases to our drill and just try to join both the databases to get some meaning out of the data. So without further ado, let's get into it. So here I have booted up my HTTP sandbox. So just wait for all the services are running fine. So it is running fine for me. So the next step would be to go to your favorite browser and open Ambari. And here login as Maria underscore dev and you know the password which is Maria underscore dev. Then hit sign in. And as you can see, all the services are running fine without any issues as we have zero alerts here. So the first thing is we need to create one table in Hive so that we can query it through drill. So all you have to do is go to the Hive view. Okay. So in the Hive, we, we don't have any database. So we have to first create one database. So we will create the database by using the DDL command and the database name would be movies data. Okay. Execute it. So the query has been submitted. So it is taking some time. Yeah, it got succeeded. So if you just refresh the metadata here. Yeah, so the movies data has been created. So now we need to create one table. All we have to do is we have one data file which is ratings.data. So all you have to do is we have to download that file. So if you already have that well and good. If you don't have that file, we have it in our Git repository. So I'll just put down the link in the description below so that you can download it from the Git itself. If you guys have it just so the next step is create on upload table. So we will keep it as CSV, but instead of comma delimited, we have the delimiter as tab character because that file is delimited by tab. So I think it's ASCII value 9. Check it. Yes. So the tab delimiter is the ASCII value 9. So after that, we need to choose the file from local. So I have that file lying around in my PC. So just give like ratings.data file and just click on open. Yeah. So this is how our file look like. So I'll just keep it the format as as it is, which is ORC and here. Yeah. The, so the table name would be ratings and here you have to give the column name because that file doesn't have any header. So it is like user underscore ID. Then this is movie underscore ID. This is like a rating. So this is our rating and this is like a timestamp. So we can call it as TS and all are in integer data type. And here in the database, you need to select movies data because this table should belong to the movies data and we'll just upload the table. Yeah. Okay. So our file has been uploaded. So if you just go to the query and refresh it and click on movies data, our table has been created. So one thing is done. Now we need to create a table in the MongoDB and just populate it. So for that we have one PySpark script. So I hope you are following along. If not, I'll just repeat those steps one more time. So for that purpose, you need to go to the PuTTY terminal and log in as Maria underscore dev. So give the password and to get all the privileges, just log in as root account. So just issue root and give the password. Okay. So now one thing we need to do is we need to have the movies.users file and we need to upload it in the HDFS. So if you guys are following along and you have the mongo spark.py file in your HDP sandbox, then don't worry. So I don't have it because I have cleaned it up. So if you guys don't have that file, just follow along with me. So the first thing, let's get the file from the GitHub repository. So use the wget https colon slash slash raw dot github user content dot com slash ashe patel 11 slash hadoop slash main slash movies dot user. That's it. This is our file. Hit enter. Yeah, so the file has been downloaded. So we need to make one directory in maria underscore dev in HDFS named MongoDB and we'll just put that file into it because our Mongo Spark will read the data from that specific HDFS location. So if you guys don't have any idea, we'll first 
create one directory in HDFS and then read the data from there. Let me show you how to do that. So first step would be just create one directory, Hadoop FS, make the directory mkdir in the user mari underscore dev and it should be mongodb. That's it. Hit enter. Yeah, so the directory has been created. So we need to upload this movies.user file from our local system to the HDFS. So to do that again, give like Hadoop FS and you know the command which is copy from local. So just look out for the capitalization here. So this command will just copy the file from Unix system to the HDFS. And after that, give the file name which is movies.user and after that you need to give the path so give the path as user mari underscore dev then mongodb slash movies dot user hit enter yeah that's it so a file has been uploaded to hdfs now we need to get our pyspark script which will load the data in the mongodb and as well as read the data to get to know how the data looks like so the first thing first, let's get the PySpark script. So again, just hit up arrow and get that wget command and instead of movies.user, type like mongospark.py. So this is our Python file which we need to get from the same GitHub repository. Hit enter. And that's it. So if you want to just look into the file, so this is our mongospark.py. Yeah. So as you can see, so what you're doing here is we are importing all the required packages we are importing the spark session and here we have the parser input function and we're letting know that our file which is movies.user is delimited by pipe character and has the columns in the indexes named 0 from 4 so we have the user id age gender occupation and zip code so i hope you notice that both these files which is ratings and this user has user id as common field as we have created in hiu and here we have the main function where we are creating the spark session by using the builder method and i hope you know about what is spark and how we can integrate python with spark and work with the data so here we are creating the spark session which is an entry point of every spark application then we are building the rdd on top of the file so as you can see we have given the hdfs path where we have just put our movies.user file so if you want to know more about PySpark, i'll recommend you to go back into our playlist where we have covered all these sections in detail so to sum it up we are just creating a rdd on top of the file and we are converting it into the data frame and after that we are writing it to the mongodb so if we just go some below yeah here you can see we have the right method to write the data into the movies data and we have created a users table so we can say it as a collection because in mongodb there is no concept such as table they are called as collection so and we are using the save action here to kick off a write function and again we are reading back the data so here as you can see we are reading it back from the mongodb to get a clear idea how the data looks like in mongodb so if you are ready so just get out of here yeah so we need to kick off this pyspark script but first we need to make sure that we are using the spark version 2 because that's suitable for our mongodb so let's say like export then give like spark underscore major underscore version equals to that's it hit enter so we have selected the spark version 2 and now we can just submit our pyspark script by using the spark submit command so give like spark submit give like packages then give like org dot mongodb dot spark colon mongo dash spark dash connector underscore 2.11 colon 2.3.2 and then give the file name which is mongospark.py that's it so so regarding these packages and why we are giving this here and the versions for that i'll recommend you to go back into our tutorials where we have covered this and we have kicked off the same job so we'll get clear understanding what's going on under the hood so if everything looks good hit enter so here our job has been kicked off so it will just take some time so just get your coffee and wait for it to complete
and as you can see our job has been completed and here are the results so we have rated the results back from mongodb as well so that's why we are getting the table so as you can see this underscore id is generated as a unique key by mongodb which it does it automatically so we have discussed this in previous lectures as well so if you don't give that field it will just create it automatically for you so here so we have the data in mongodb and as well we have the data in hive so what are you waiting for we just need to start the drill service and just go back to the ui and just work with the data which we have just dumped so for that we have the directory which we have extracted in the last lecture so if you hit ls we have to go to this apache drill directory and here we have the bin directory in which we have the dot sh file we need to kick off on some specified connector which we have discussed in previous lecture so just give like bin slash drill bit dot sh space start and we are kicking it off on dash capital d drill dot exec dot http dot port and give the port name so in the previous lecture we have discussed why we need to give this specific port so just so this is because no other services using this and it's a open so that we can just communicate with drill through its web ui so just give like 8765 that's it hit enter and it's starting the drill bit and yeah it's already started so just go back to your favorite browser and give like localhost 8765 so just in the newer tab give like localhost colon 8765 so here comes the drill hit enter that's it so in the previous lecture we have just gone to the storage and here as you can see we have just configured hive and mongodb we have enabled the services and in hive we have given the metastore path as localhost colon 9083 so just go back to the query now so here for checking the databases we can give a simple command which is show databases so just submit the command yeah so as you can see here are all the databases which are present in the services which we are enabled so as you can see here we have the hive.movies data which we have just created as well as mongo.movies data which we have just created so this hive.movies data and mongo.movies data we can use join operation to just join both these tables and get some meaning out of it so are you ready to execute it okay then just hit back to the query and for starter we'll just select some data from hive just to make sure that it's working fine so just select star from hive dot movies data dot ratings limit 10 so you just submit it yeah so it is working so as you can see here are the 10 entries so we have the user id movie id rating and ts so similarly let's check the data in mongodb so here you can see we have the user id and I believe that our MongoDB collection also has this user ID field. So if you again select the data from MongoDB, select star from mongo.moviesdata.users limit 10. If you just submit it, yeah, it was very quick. So here you can see we have this ID, age, gender, occupation, and here you can see we have the user ID. So this is the field on which we can use it for joining these two tables and get some meaning out of it. Okay, so just hit back to the query. And let's say if you want to get the data in which we'll get the occupation and the number of rating that each occupation has done. So it will give you how many ratings the student has given or how many ratings the doctor or lawyer has given. So this will be a meaningful data because let's say i think from the common sense itself student only will watch more movies than any other occupation so just want to make sure let's make that query so that we can able to join mongodb as well as hive database so so just give like select so here we are selecting the occupation so here just use the table alias here we'll give we'll assign that later but here for mongo just give like m dot occupation because our users table is present in in the mongodb then we need the count of all the values from and here give the hive table which is hive dot movies data 
dot ratings and we'll give the alias as h as hiu and we will join this table to our table present in mongodb database so give like mongo dot again movies data give like users and here we have given the alias for mongodb table as m that's it and we are joining on the basis of h dot user id user underscore id equal to m dot user id so here user underscore id is present in both the tables and we will be grouping it as per the occupation so just use the group by the occupation which is m dot occupation so this is simple sql and i hope this is pretty much easy for you to understand so what it is doing is it will just give you the occupation and the count of all the ratings which every occupation has given from the hiu ratings table and we have joined it to our users table present in mongodb so it is pretty straightforward so if we just hit submit it will take some time so under the hood it's joining two databases and that's it i don't think it was that of time consuming one but under the hood it is doing so much work because we are joining hiu which is kind of a rdbms which deals with structured data and in mongodb which is no sql database which deals with a loosely structured data and has pre schema so as you can see if we just get all the entries and that's it so here if we just sort it as per yeah the order and that's it i think that was pretty predictable because let's be honest students will watch more movies than any other occupation so we'll just do not count these others because i think these people don't mention their profession i don't know why and here as you can see we have educator engineer programmer and if you just go to the yeah so homemaker don't have much time to watch movies so it is very less in this but uh, this is pretty small data so you can't do a very predictable analysis but it just makes sense so i hope you like this lecture so here we have just created one table in hiu as as well as we have kicked off our mongospark.py which will just write the data into mongodb so that we can play with it and also we have just joined these two databases using the drill which is query engine and it's very simple to use we just need to go into the storage and enable those services which are having on our sdb sandbox and that's it there's nothing much learning curve to it if you know sql you know apache drill that's it you just want to make sure that you know how to connect to the different databases by using the jdbc odbc connector and you should know the sql so this lecture was all about creating some tables in hive as well as creating some collection in mongodb and we have used drill query engine to just work with the data and get some meaning out of it we have also used the join operation so that we'll get to know how capable is drill it was so simple to just work with both the databases at a time but it is not recommended since at the end of the day no sql databases still store the data as a loosely structured and hiu stores the data in structured way so this will not be compatible and if you're dealing with petabytes of data it will create issues and consume lot of resources so just look out for that so if everything is done so just go back to your virtual box and use the acp shutdown so this is one step you need to follow once you're done with all your task on the hdp sandbox and i'll see you in the next lecture where we will discuss about our next topic which is phoenix i hope you like this lecture so please subscribe to our channel and also ring the notification bell to get the latest updates and don't forget to follow us on our social media which i have linked in the description below thanks for watching